Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on Cambridge International Examination. It's going to be based on information technology, paper 4, October November 2018. And I'm going to be answering the vector image creation part and the animation part. So let's dive right in. Yeah, paper four. It says you are working on Tawara Technology Solution now, TTS. TTS have commissions from Top Tables, a company that supplies furniture and tableware for parties and events. You are part of a team preparing digital resources to support Top Tables. You are required to include evidence of your work and answer the questions in the NOV 18 Evidence RTF document. Resave this document as evidence center number candidate number example evidence ZZ999 underscore 9999. Top tables require a preparation of some media elements that could be used in promotional material. We have supplied some sketches of objects they need creating in a graphics application. They need some animated media for their website. They want to show a plate rotating and changing in size and also plates falling from the grid. So first of all, we are going to do the vector image of the plates and then we are going to look at animating it in the second part. So let's look at the first question. Let's see, is create this image showing two views of a plate with the dimensions shown. So we are going to create a plate from the top view and then the side view. These are the instructions. The plate must be white with a black outline of three. Let me highlight that part. Aside the dimensions, these are what we are supposed to look out for. There must be shading to indicate the depth of the plate. So I highlight shading. The text on the plate must be 36 points and a serif font. And do not display the dimensions. Last but not the least, place a screenshot. So we need a screenshot of the image showing all the guidelines that you used in your evidence documents. And then we save it as, okay, so this is going to be very short. So let me dive straight in to our vector image editor. I'm using Adobe Illustrator. So before then, let me switch back to the question and have a look at the dimensions. So we have a diameter of 10 centimeters. And for the side view, we have a height of one centimeter plus 0 0.2 down here. And then we have one centimeter, so making 1.2 that's the actual height of the plate and then the diameter is 10 centimeters okay so um, the okay so where the depth begins is 1.5 centimeters into the plate from the edge so Let's go back to our Illustrator page and then create new. So we are going to create an artboard in centimeters. So make sure your centimeters is ticked. And we have 10 centimeters in diameter plus 1.2, making 11. So we can add, create some allow for some space on the sides so we can write 
12 as the width and for the height you can write 14. Make sure your color mode is on RGB and your PPI is 300 and click create. Now since we are going to be dealing with dimensions, the first thing we need to do is to add your ruler by pressing Ctrl and R, then your ruler pops up. So it indicates here from the top here you see your 0 to 12 in width and then from here 0 to 14 in height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create the ellipse. Since we've been given the dimension, when I select the ellipse tool, I click on the add board once. And make sure this is linked. And then for the width, I just type in 10. Automatically, the height also follows and you click OK. So you have your 10 centimeter in width and height, or let's say in diameter, circle. Now since we should it should have a stroke of three points. The stroke showing here is one. So we need to change that to three plus that's the outline that is required. Good. And another thing you can do is you can start drawing your guides. And to draw your guides, what you do is you place your cursor on the ruler, click and drag. Now you see this line forming. Make sure it falls on the one centimeter line and then you leave it so you have a guide. To click and drag. We've already taken one, so we need to add another one to make it 11. So it means, let me push this circle aside. It means from this guide to this guide is 10 centimeters. I'm going to do the same thing for the height, zero to one, and then down to 11. Okay, so we have our guide. We can place our circle in between and it fits in. Yeah, it fits in correctly, but you see that the outline is going beyond your guide, which is not correct. So I'm going to fix this by selecting my circle and making sure that the stroke is on the inside. So you come to the properties panel here, click on stroke and align stroke to inside. And when you do that, everything falls within the guide. So I have my first plate. And then the second plate or as the depth is also a circle within this circle. So those both circles are going to be concentric, meaning they are going to share the same center. And it is 1.5 in diameter less than this one. So we're going to do some calculation. I'm going to open my calculator. So 
so we had 10 for the big one and that's going to be minus 1.5 times 2 which is 3 so we have a circle in diameter of 7 so I'm going to pick my ellipse tool again click on the stage and change this to 7 and then say ok now note that this time around we don't need a stroke all we need is a a gradient so I'm going to switch off the stroke like this and then what we are going to do is we are going to add a gradient the gradient is supposed to be gray and white first of all let me change this workspace to painting yeah so that I have my gradient tool here and since it's going to be gray and white I can begin by clicking the default that has been given and then change the slider here from black to gray now I need to change the gradient type to radial and since the white dominates the gray I need to move this gradient slider towards the right more towards the right to give that impression now since the circles are supposed to be concentric I'm going to make sure they both share the same center so I select both you can just drag across both are selected and go to align at the top here and click on horizontal align and vertical align okay what it does it moves your it moves both the artwork out of the guide so all you need to do is snap it back into the guides So we are almost done with the top view of the plate. And let's go back and see what the question further requires. Okay, so we are going to be adding some guides and then we dive in straight into the side view. So let's complete this top view by adding our text. To add our text, we need another circle, which will be slightly bigger than the inner one, but less than the outer one. So I'm going to click once again, and I'm going to say this is going to be seven. I think 7.2 or let's say 7.5 I don't need a fill neither do I need a stroke so all I need is this path I'm going to place it so that they share the same center so if you see intersect in the middle it means it's centered and aligned so i'm going to select it make sure it's selected and i go to my text tool and select type on path uh, click on the path and i make sure i select a serif font Serif font is a 
fonts that have these extensions at their ends like times new roman so i'm going to select times new roman which is simple and i'm going to type and make sure the size is 36 et or 36 points so i drop down and select 36 and then i type what is required top tables and i say Now I need to move this to the top or the center. So first of all, let me go to paragraph and make sure I have aligned it to center. Correct. So the next thing I want to do is to move the handles in such a way that my text ends up up here in the middle. So I'm going to zoom in and explain a thing or two. So you see this handles here. One indicates the end of your text and the other indicates the beginning of your text. So when you hover it over it, you see one arrow showing this way. This indicates the end of your text and the other one showing the other way showing the right indicates the beginning of your text so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the end of your text selecting it can be a bit tricky so when you see the arrow then you start dragging along so you, yeah you drag along drag this one as well till it ends up in the middle see the P is touching the inner circle which is wrong so we need to correct that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the path on which the text is and where's okay I need to go to Windows and add my properties panel which is down here yeah properties panel and change the width and height you can increase it a little bit so that the p doesn't touch so i'm going to change it to 7.7 .7. so that it stays within the space provided okay so we are done with the top view tape now let's do the side view but before then i need to add some guides to indicate where the inner circle began and ended so we we'll have something like this. Do the same for the top. Great. So I think yeah. So the image. I'm going to create the side view plate but before then I need to go back and refer to the dimensions okay so we were given a height of one centimeter and 1.2 centimeters and then we have this bottom part of the plate which is five centimeters in width and 0.2 of a centimeter in height.
So let's get back into our Illustrator. So we're going to create that side view plate down here. First of all, let me create some extra space in the artboard. And to do that, you go to your artboard tab here. Click on this small icon here. The dimension that you have for now. And change the height. Let's add some extra two centimeters. So that's going to be 16. And let's use this top here as the reference point. If you use the middle, if I click here, it's going to add two centimeters all round but now we want to add it just to this bottom part so we use the top as a reference point and then we click ok so it makes this portion higher and the next thing is i'll select my rectangle tool make sure i start from this portion of the guide and end here click once since we've been given dimensions this time around and make sure the width is 10 and the height is 1 and click OK I don't need a fill the fill should be white and the stroke should be black 3 points stroke Aligned to the inside and then it should fit in between your guides correctly so it fits in your guide so you have the height of the plate and then we are going to do the second one which has a width of 5 and a height of 0.2 With this one, I'm going to reduce the stroke size so that we can see, at least we can see it. Now I'm going to align both horizontal center so to be exactly beneath it. So I'm going to hold shift and drag it to snap just under it Let me zoom in on what is going on here okay so let's go back to the question and have a look at eyes so we have this curved nature here on both sides meeting the bottom part of the plate so to do that i'm going to select my direct selection tool the direct selection tool and hold this bottom corner here i'm going to double click and drag it to come and meet this point i'm going to do the same to the other side drag to come and meet this point and then i'm going to use this i'm going to convert the anchor point that i've just moved to curve so i'm going to click on it once and then hold this handle as I hold shift 
and drag it along I'm going to do the same thing to this side click on the curve once hold shift whilst you straighten the hand and drag it along till you have your curve Okay, so we are going to continue by taking a screenshot. As it's asked here, it says take a screenshot of the image showing any guidelines that you used in your evidence document. So I'm going to go back into Illustrator with everything showing the top view and the side view. And I'm going to press the window and the print screen button and then it takes a screenshot so to get your screenshot you go to your pictures folder here pictures and go into screenshots and then you go down there and pick your screenshot which is here then you copy it and place it in your evidence folder that you will be provided with the question didn't verify or say you should name it in a special way so we can just name it screenshot so the next thing we want to do is to save the image in a scalable vector graphics scalable vector graphics let me highlight that format as plate view center number okay so that's going to be plate views your center number you you have and then your candidate number you'll be provided with so an example has been given here on how you should name the file so i'm going to go by this example in saving the file so let's go back into illustrator and quickly do that so need to go to file save us and from down here I'm going to select SVG scalable vector graphics so as I said I'm going to use my example so I'm going to copy this and paste it as a name and save just click OK and we are good to go so the next portion of the question says um, export only the face view of the plate as a hundred pixels by hundred pixels bitmap with a transparent background so we are going to export it as a PNG format with this name plate face your center number and your candidate number plate face your center number and your candidate number all should be separated by underscore if you leave out the underscore you you lose that mark so um let me go back into illustrator and it says 100 pixels by 100 pixels but what we have is in centimeters so to make matters short or to make things easier for you you just create a new artboard ensure that the, the artboard is 100 pixels by 100 pixels it should be in pixel format not centimeters pixel format and then you click create to create another artboard for you and we want the plate face so we are going to select or you can drag till you have both the inner plate the outer plate and the text selected and hold and drop it on the new page you know it's going to be bigger than your artboard so 
you have to press Ctrl and minus repeatedly so that you reduce the size of your stage. Go to any of the corners, hold down Shift and Alt and reduce the size of your plate. Now press Ctrl and 0 to come back to the normal size and make sure you hold shift and alt till it fits into your 100 by 100 I think this is okay. Okay, so it doesn't have a background, so it's it's transparent. So we are asked to let me be sure. We are asked to save it as save the image in it. SVG format, okay. So that's going to be plate view. And then export the face view in a 100 by 100 bit map, which is going to be a PNG in a transparent manner. So we are going to save it as a PNG. And to do that, we are going to go to File, Export, Export as. And then we are going to select PNG from the list here. And we are going to name it. Yeah, we're going to name it this text, plate face. We already have our screenshot here. Plate face and say export click OK now I think we are good to go so the next thing we are going to look at is the, the side view it should also be of 100 px in width as a bitmap with a transparent background and it should be named plate side center number candidate number. I'm going to use the example as my center number and candidate number. And let's go back into Illustrator, go back to our work. And this time around, we are saving this the side view. So I'm going to go into file. New. The width I'm going to maintain 100, but the height I'm going to reduce it to say 13 pixels. So I'm going to have something like this. So as I did for the other one, I'm going to select both, hold, drag across to that artboard and drop it. Press Ctrl and minus repeatedly to reduce the size. And here's one thing you should take note of. If you are reducing the size of an artwork, chances are that your stroke will make the whole thing look clumsy. So if you are reducing the size and you're not getting it as the way it should be, what I recommend is you select everything, go to right click, go to transform, go down to scale and make sure in the options section, both scale corners is ticked and scale strokes and effects are also ticked. Then you click OK. So I'm going to reduce the size of this to 
what we've been given so i'm going to hold shift whilst doing that so that the dimensions in width and height do not change let me bring it back to the normal size and I think we are good to go. Okay, so this one also doesn't have a background. So I'm going to go into File, Save As, sorry, Export As. It's also going to be a PNG and I need to give it, copy the name that have here. So I'm going to copy the name, paste and export so what we are doing is we are preparing the files which we were going to use in a second part of this tutorial <coughs> which will be mainly the animation part once again i would encourage you to like and subscribe to this channel so that I can be churning out more of these videos. If you have any comments or suggestions or questions, you can place them in the comment section and I'll be glad to answer. Once again, thank you for viewing. See you in part two. Bye.